Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Micah from the two LDS archives. Got another video today. Uh, paper. Uh, New Jerusalem, Zion, City of Holiness, and there it is, folks. The Elixir of Life. As always, the videos uh, are the paper. It can be found on my family blog totally for free. You can download it, print it off. It won't cost you anything. I've been receiving a lot of very, very, very good emails, and um, I've set up a new um, blog um, Q&A section on the, the family website that if you go to, and click on the link that is in the description to take you to the blog, you will see in the description on the very, very top um, a location where you can have a Q&A. So if you still want to send me private emails, you're more than welcome to send private emails. But if you don't care whether or not people see your questions and then people see my answers, uh, you can go there and that might prevent um, having to answer more than one question or maybe even get people talking to each other if they really feel like like they, they want to talk to each other, right? Uh, you don't have to sign up for anything. You don't have to... Um, um, do anything just click I want to make a comment and make your comment and uh, leave so that that's now set up um, in this video like I said New Jerusalem Zion City of Holiness um, like I've said in a previous video really recently I believe this is on the horizon so I think this is important to get out now articles of faith number 10 we believe in the literal gathering of Israel and in the restoration of the 10 tribes they Zion the New Jerusalem will be built upon the American continent that Christ will reign personally upon the earth and that the earth will be renewed and receive his paradisiacal glory. Before we can learn about the new Jerusalem, which is to be built, let us learn about the first such city that we know of being built. We learn about that in Moses. It came to pass that Enoch continued to speak, saying, Behold, our father Adam taught these things, and many have believed and become the sons of God, and many have believed not and have perished in their sins and are looking forth with fear in torment for the fiery indignation of the wrath of God to be poured out upon them. And from that time forth, Enoch began to prophesy, saying unto the people that as I was journeying and stood upon the place Mahuja, I don't know how that's pronounced, and cried unto the Lord, there came a voice out of heaven, saying, Turn ye, and get ye upon the mount Simeon. And it came to pass that I turned and went upon the mount, and I stood upon the mount and as I stood upon the mount, I beheld the heavens open, and I was clothed upon with glory. And I saw the Lord, and he stood before my face. And he talked to me, with me, even as a man talketh one with another, face to face. And he said unto me, Look, and I will show unto thee the world for the space of many generations. And from that time forth there were wars and bloodsheds among them. But the Lord came and dwelt with his people and they dwelt in righteousness. The fear of the Lord was upon all nations, so great was the glory of the Lord, which was upon his people. And the Lord blessed the land, and they were blessed upon the mountains and upon the high places, and did flourish. And the Lord called his people Zion because they uh, were of one heart and one mind. He called his city. Like, if you have a group of people, uh, as a, uh, and you name it something, I had a group of people, and I called the, the group of people Winnipeg. And I called the people uh, Boise, Idaho. I called the people Salt Lake City Valley, right? And I called them that because they were of one heart and one mind and dwelt in righteousness. And there was no poor among them. And Enoch continued his preaching and righteousness unto the people of God. And it came to pass in his days that he built a city, that it was called the City of Holiness, even Zion. Okay, one and the same. And it came to pass that Enoch, right, city, uh, you know, anyway. And it came to pass that Enoch talked with the Lord, and he said unto the Lord, Surely Zion shall dwell in safety forever. But the Lord said unto Enoch, Zion have I blessed, but the residue of the people have I cursed. And it came to pass the Lord showed unto Enoch all the inhabitants of the earth, and he beheld, and lo, Zion in the process of time was taken up into heaven. And the Lord said unto Enoch, Behold mine abode forever, or residence and after that, Zion was taken up into heaven. Enoch beheld, and lo, all of the nations of the earth were before him. Behold, I am God. Man of holiness is my name. Man of holiness is my name. That's interesting. Man of counsel is my name, and endless and eternal is my name also. 
Bruce R. McConkie in the Book Mormon Doctrine, page 29, defines all man. See, God, man of holiness, son of man. In the pure language spoken by Adam and which will be spoken again during the millennial era, the name of God, the Father, is Amen, or possibly Amen. A name title having a meaning identical with, or at least very closely akin to, man of holiness. God revealed himself to Adam by this name to signify that he is a holy man, a truth which a man must know and comprehend if he is to become like God and inherit exaltation, end quote. And he has references in his um, work always. Uh, this comes up again, the name Amen, in Adam on Diamond, or simply the land of God where Adam dwelt. So let me get this straight. God's name is Man of Holiness, and the city of Zion was named City of Holiness. A plainer translation in today's tongue might very well read God's city. A city that God has put his stamp of approval on and has accepted into his bosom. Over the course of the planet's temporal history, there have been multiple cities or groups that have obtained this status and have been taken to heaven. They have all been collectively taken to the same place, a place that Latter-day Saints simply refer to as the city of Enoch. So what does a city need to have or be for the Lord to put his name upon it as the Lord has put his name upon his church? The Savior clarifies in 3 Nephi 21, 22 to 24, that there is a difference between the Lord's church that he puts his name on and his city that he puts his name on. 3521 we read, but if they will repent and hearken unto my words and harden not their hearts, I will establish my church among them. And they shall come in under the covenant and be numbered among this, rem th this the remnant of Jacob, unto whom I have given this land for their inheritance. So that's group, that's one entity. And they shall assist by people, the remnant of Jacob, and also as many of the house of Israel as they come, that they may build a city which shall be called the New Jerusalem. And then shall they assist my people that they may be gathered in who are scattered upon all the face of the land into the New Jerusalem. End quote. The Lord has repeatedly given the commandment in Scripture to refuse none in my church. This has gone into great depth in the Book of Mormon, found in 3 Nephi 18, verses 30 and 32, as well as in the Doctrine and Covenants in DNC 46, 3 through 6, and other locations. Now, where am I getting at with this? The Lord's city, Zion, city of holiness, New Jerusalem. Now, that's a different story. Revelation 21, we read, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abominations or maketh a lie, but that which is written in the book, but they which are written in the, the Lamb's book of life. End quote. This doctrine is taught in a multitude of locations, including what I just read above in Revelation, as well as 3 Nephi 22, 11 through 17, as well as Isaiah chapters, as well as in Enoch's story above, which I, I read uh, at the start. The people in that city felt so secure from outside influences that they said, surely we will dwell in safety forever. And the Lord clarifies, paraphrasing it, you will dwell in safety because I've placed a border of protection around you, but those outside outside of this group, I have cursed them. When the Lord casts up his highways, which will happen in uh, the latter days, they, th those highways will be called the way of holiness. And we learn that no unclean thing can set foot upon it. Even the beasts, uh, the nasty beasts that try to walk on it will die. We, all, we have already also mentioned that the land of God, Adam on Diamond, which was the Garden of Eden, and guess what? No unclean thing could dwell there either. That's why Adam and Eve were kicked out and the cherubim placed to guard the entrance. Unclean things can and should enter the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but unclean things cannot come back into the presence of the man of holiness unclean things cannot walk on the way of holiness. No unclean thing should enter into the house 
of holiness, which we could commonly call uh, temples, but they're actually houses of holiness. And no unclean thing can dwell in the city of holiness. So what does a city need to be? What does it need to have to be accepted as a city of holiness? Well, turning to Doctrine and Covenants 105, we read, Verily I say unto you, you have... Uh, who have assembled yourselves together that you may learn my will concerning the redemption of mine afflicted people. Behold, I say unto you, were it not for the transgressions of my people speaking concerning the church and not individuals, they must have been redeemed even now. But behold, they have not learned to be obedient to the things which I required at their hands, but are full of all manner of evil and do not impart of their substances as become a saints to the poor and the afflicted among them. And are not united according to the union required by the law of the celestial kingdom. And Zion cannot be built up unless it is by the principles of the law of the celestial kingdom. Otherwise, I cannot receive her unto myself. End quote. It is true that one can be and will be saved in the highest degree of the celestial kingdom if one accepts and lives according to the light that they have received. This, however, does not mean that a city can be accepted of the Lord simply by doing its best with the light that it receives. They have to be living celestial law in order for the Lord to put his name on that city. So simply put, one can obtain the highest degree of the celestial kingdom without living celestial law because it might not be there for you to live. But one cannot build Zion. One cannot have a city accepted of the Lord. One cannot have a city of holiness without celestial law. So once we have celestial law and then once we have a group of people living celestial law, how do we know that the Lord has accepted the city for his own. How do we know that the city has become the city of holiness, even Zion? 35, 21, 25. And then shall the powers of heaven come down among them, and I also will be in the midst. 35, 20, 22. And behold, this people will I establish in the land unto the fulfilling of the covenant which I have made with your father Jacob. And it shall be a new Jerusalem, and the powers of heaven shall be in the midst of this people. Yea, even I will be in the midst of you. Moses 7, 16. The Lord came and dwelt with his people, and they dwelt in righteousness. End quote. But I can hear it now. Micah, you are wrong. Zion is the pure in heart, which is the Latter-day Saints. I am Zion. You are Zion. We're all Zion. Okay, where are members getting this from? Doctrine and Covenants 9721, Therefore verily, thus saith the Lord, let Zion rejoice, for this is Zion, the pure in heart, which it appears in the uh, Doctrine and Covenants in all caps. That's important. Therefore, let Zion rejoice while all the wicked shall mourn, end quote. Members, take this verse and just this verse, and then mistakenly broad stroke the entire church as, quote, the pure in heart. And then because of that, they then say we're all Zion. But how about we have a little context with what was said here in verse 21. Let's go back to verse 15, quote, And inasmuch as my people build a house unto me in the name of the Lord, and do not suffer any unclean thing to come into it, that it be not defiled, my glory shall rest upon it. Yea, and my presence shall be there, for I will come unto it, and all the pure in heart that shall come in unto it shall see God. But if it be defiled, I will not come in unto it, and my glory shall not be there, for I will not come into unholy temples. And now, behold, if Zion do these things, she shall prosper and spread and become very glorious, very great, and very terrible." And the nations of the earth shall honor her and shall say, Surely Zion is the city of our God, and surely Zion cannot fail, neither be moved out of her place, for God is there, and the hand of the Lord is there. And he has sworn by the power of his might to be her salvation and 
her high tower. Therefore, therefore, verily, thus saith the Lord, let Zion rejoice, for this is Zion, the pure in heart. Therefore, let Zion rejoice while all the wicked shall mourn, end quote. Once again, Zion isn't referencing a people, a person. It is referencing a place, a place that is special because holiness, his presence, is literally there. Way of holiness, house of holiness, city of holiness, land of holiness. So what does the Lord mean here? When he says, Zion is the pure in heart. And why is that phrase capitalized? If the Lord holiness, if the, the Lord holiness is on the way, if he is in the house or is in the city, who are the people who get to see him? The Lord answers this in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 8, as well as when he repeated that Sermon on the Mount to the Nephites in 3rd Nephi 12, 8, quote, and blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, end quote. The Savior here is not identifying Zion as the pure in heart, but the Lord is saying Zion is full of the pure in heart. The Lord says, Quote, therefore, let the people in Zion rejoice. In Zion rejoice. And, uh, and the reason why he says Zion should rejoice, so therefore, let the people in Zion, right? Not So Zion's the place. And the reason why he says Zion should rejoice and will be rejoicing is because they get to see him i.e. they are pure in heart, right? So why is it all caps? They are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So for members who believe they are Zion, who believe they are the pure in heart, but yet haven't seen the risen Lord, their theory doesn't hold water. If they believe that they are Zion because they are pure in heart, the Savior said, if you are pure in heart and are Zion, you're going to see me. When the Lord has a group of people willing and able to live celestial law, he will restore celestial law. Once those people are living celestial law, they can redeem Zion and build her. Once she is made acceptable and the Lord accepts her unto himself, the city becomes a city of holiness. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints' job is to take us, nasty, unclean, filthy creatures, and get us to a condition wherein we are made ready and willing to live celestial law. If we as members don't humble ourselves, the Lord will have to humble us. For when time's up, time's up. The Lord has given us time to do it ourselves. When that time is past, well, then what comes next is Doctrine and Covenants 105.6. And my people must needs be chastened until they learn obedience. If it must needs be by the things which they suffer. Revelation 7, we read, and one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said, to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, end quote. These years of great tribulation ahead are going to be what gets us ready because we obviously didn't get ready ourselves from June 22nd, 1834, when Doctrine and Covenants 105 was received onward to today. Those familiar with the macro last day timeline Know that the desolating sickness comes, which gives rise to the Assyrian and the scourge. The days of tribulation kickstart. Two years into the tribulation, the ten tribes return. After the people have celestial law and are living it, they then redeem Zion and build New Jerusalem. Bruce R. McConkie summarized the New Jerusalem to be built as, quote, the latter, the, la the latter days are to see the initial building of the 
New Jerusalem on the American continent, a city which, like its ancient counterpart, will be a holy city, a Zion, a city of God. A city of God. So there it is. The New Jerusalem is to be built by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Jackson County, Missouri is the spot designated by Revelation for its construction. It shall be built when the Lord directs. End quote, Bruce Armour Quonky. After reading Moses 7, 62, which I'll be using later in this paper, so I won't read it here, Joseph Smith explained, quote, Now I understand by this quotation that God clearly manifests to Enoch the redemption, which he prepared by offering the Messiah as the lamb slain from before the foundation of the world. And by virtue of the same, the glorious resurrection of the Savior and the resurrection of all human family, of all the human family, even a resurrection of their corporal bodies, is brought to pass, and also righteousness and truth are, are to sweep the earth as with a flood. And now I ask how righteousness and truth are going to sweep the earth with, as with a flood. I will answer. Men and angels are to be co-workers in bringing to pass this great work, and Zion is to be prepared, even a new Jerusalem, for the elect that are to be gathered from the four quarters of the earth, and to be established unholy city, for the tabernacle of the Lord shall be with them. That is found in Teachings of the Prophet, page 84. He continues, And now I am prepared to say by the authority of Jesus Christ that no, not many years shall pass away before the United States shall present such a scene of bloodshed as not a parallel in the history of our nation. Pestilence, hail, famine, and earthquakes shall sweep the wicked of this generation from off the face of the land to open and prepare the way for the return of the lost ten tribes of Israel from the north country. The people of the Lord, those who have c complied with the requirements of the new covenant, that's celestial law, have already commenced gathering together to Zion, which is in the state of Missouri. Shortly after this, they disbanded the celestial law. Uh, once again, so end quote from, end two quotes from uh, Joseph Smith, once again, the macro timeline still Timeline stands. Sictus comes because it paves the way for the scourge. Days of tribulation kickstart. Two years in. Ten tribes return from the north country. Once celestial law has been restored, which is the new covenant, and they are living it, they can redeem Jackson County and build New Jerusalem. Angels will assist in the building of New Jerusalem. And one of those angels will be Joseph Smith. Um, jo John Taylor described this building in a vision he had and subsequently recorded. Quote, immediately after I seem to be standing on the left bank of the Missouri River, opposite of the city of Independence. But there was no city. I saw the whole state of Missouri and Illinois and all of Iowa, a complete desert with no living beings there. Short distance from the river, however, I saw 12 men dressed in a temple robe standing in a square, or nearly so, and I understood it to represent the 12 gates of the New Jerusalem. Their hands were uplifted in con. Uh, consecration of the ground and laying a cornerstone of the temple i saw myriads of angels hovering over them and saw also an immense pillar of clouds over them and heard the angels singing the most heavenly music the words were now is established the kingdom of god and his christ which shall never more be thrown down i saw people coming from the river and from the desert places a long way off to help build the temple and it seemed that hosts of angels all helped to get material to build with and i saw that some of them who were in who wore temple clothes come and build the temple and the city and all the time i saw the great pillar of clouds hovering over the place end quote at this time it is important to combat two misconceptions about this new jerusalem and the building of it Oops. One, that the 144,000, the New Jerusalem, the return of the 10 tribes, etc., they're all figurative. Or, the original plan has changed. Well, President Joseph Fielding Smith addressed this first misconception thus. The city of Zion and temple yet to be built. Nearly 100 years have passed since the site of Zion was dedicated and the spot for the temple was chosen and some of the members of the church seem to be fearful lest the word of the Lord shall fail. Others have tried to convince themselves that the original plan has changed and that the Lord doesn't require at our hands this mighty work which has been predicted by the prophets of ancient times. 
We have not been released from this responsibility, nor shall we be. The word of the Lord will not fail. If we look back and examine his word carefully, we will discover that nothing has failed at all, that he hath predicted, that he hath predicted, neither shall one jot or tittle pass away unfulfilled. It is true that the Lord commands the saints, commanded the saints to build to his name a temple in Zion. This they attempted to do, but were prevented by their enemies. So the Lord did not require the work at their hands at that time. The release from the building of the temple did not, however, cancel the responsibility of building the city and the house of the Lord. Notice he capitalized the city and house. At some future time, when the Lord gets ready for it to be accomplished, he will command his people and the Lord, the work will be done. Two millennial world capitals. Capitals. This western continent is known as the land of Joseph and is also designated as the land of Zion. The holy city which is to be built upon this land is sometimes called the city of Zion. We should keep in mind that these terms, city of Zion and New Jerusalem, have reference to the same sanctified place from whence shall go forth the law with the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Enoch's city was also called Zion, which means by interpretation, the pure in heart. So the name Zion is the name of the city. The interpretation of it is the pure in heart. Two cities, Jerusalem and New Jerusalem. Jerusalem of old, after the Jews have been cleansed and sanctified from all their sins, shall become a holy city wherein the Lord shall dwell, and from whence he shall send forth his word unto the people. This is after the events at Mount of Olives. Likewise, on this continent, the city of Zion, New Jerusalem, shall be built, and from it the law of God shall go forth. There will be no conflict, for each city shall be headquarters for the Redeemer of the world, and from each he shall send forth his proclamations as occasion may require. This is why there's silence in heaven. Jerusalem, because he doesn't have to talk from heaven anymore, he speaks from New Jerusalem and, and Old Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be the gathering place for Judah and his fellows of the house of Israel, and Zion shall be the gathering place of Ephraim and his fellows, upon whose heads shall be conferred the richer blessings. End quote. And you can find that in Doctrines of Salvation. Elder Lund of the 70 stated, quote, the prophet Joseph Smith clearly indicates that the 12,000 sealed from each of the 12 tribes is not just a symbolic representation of the forces of righteousness as some scholars, i.e. keyless individuals, maintain. They are a great missionary force of the sixth seal. Joseph Smith shows us that they are ordained high priests chosen from among every nation to carry forth the gospel and bring as many as will come to the ch true church. Uh, in another revelation, the prophet Joseph Smith indicated that these 144,000 would also stand on Mount Zion with the Savior. Uh, the prophet also said shortly before his death, I attended a prayer meeting with the quorum of the assembly room and made some remarks respecting the 144,000 mentioned by John the Revelator. Showing, showing that the selection of persons to form that number had already commenced. This statement would seem to indicate that a great body of missionary, the great, this great body of missionaries, may be comprised of mortals and immortals together. And we had that quote from Joseph Smith above that said, "How will this work go forth <gasps> with with angels and man?" Right. So once again, confirming that. Parley P. Pratt, speaking of Psalms 102, said, quote, From the scripture we learn, first, that there is a set time to build up Zion, or the city of which Isaiah speaks, namely, just before the second coming of Christ. And that when this city is built, the Lord will appear in his glory and not before. So from this we affirm that if such a city is never built, then the Lord will never come, end quote. A second mix misconception or misunderstanding regarding the New Jerusalem is that the New Jerusalem in Jackson County won't actually be built. It will just simply fall out of heaven and land, like in a sci-fi spaceship movie. Now, we've already gone over enough quotes to quite confidently say that the New Jerusalem that is to be built in Jackson County, Zion, 
which will become a city of holiness, that it will be built by mortal hands and angels. But let me add one more series of quotes from Joseph Smith before continuing. Quote, Moses, after having pronounced the blessings and cursings upon the children of Israel for their obedience or disobedience, says thus, And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God has driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice, According to all that I command thee, this day thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul, and then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all nations where the Lord thy, thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the utmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence he will fetch thee. Many will say that this scripture is fulfilled, but let them mark carefully what the prophet says, quote, If any are driven out out unto the utmost parts of heaven, end quote. Then he says this, which must mean the breadth of the earth. And again, see the Book of Mormon, which says, Behold, this people will I establish in this land under the fulfilling of the covenant which I made under your father Jacob. And it shall be a new Jerusalem. Now we learn from the Book of Morbid the very identical continent and spot of land upon which the new Jerusalem is to stand. And it must be caught up according to the vision of John upon the Isles of Patmos. Now, many will feel disposed to say that this new Jerusalem spoken of is the Jerusalem that was built by the Jews on the eastern continent. But you will see from Revelation 21.2 there was a new Jerusalem coming down from God, out of heaven, adorned as a bride for her husband, that after this the revelator was caught away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and saw the great and holy city descending out of heaven from God. Now there are two cities spoken of here, as everyone cannot be had in so narrow a compass as, the le as a letter. I shall say it with brevity that there is a new Jerusalem to be established on this continent, and also Jerusalem shall be rebuilt on the eastern continent. End quote from Joseph Smith. These individuals in the second group take this quote from Moses, saying that Israel will be scattered to the utmost parts of heaven. And then they combine that with come down from heaven. And then they infer that this is how the new Jerusalem will be built. The problem with that interpretation is that the prophet Joseph Smith clearly identifies the, quote, outmost parts of heaven, end quote, which, quote, must mean the breadth of the earth, end quote. Doesn't mean space. He then goes on to explain that people's, people's confusion arises, Joseph explains, the people's confusion arises with these Jerusalems because they think there's only one city of holiness. So why must the city in Jackson County be built by those in the flesh and not simply appear from heaven? There is power in doing things in the flesh which cannot be done outside of mortal flesh. This concept alone could take up an entire seminar. If angels could do everything, there would be no need for prophets. If God could simply drop down a new Jerusalem complete with celestial angelic inhabitants, why hasn't he done so before? And if he hasn't done, so it, done it before, what makes you think he'll do it in the future? Mortals have to bring heaven to them through their faith and works. And more specifically, families are required to bring the Lord into a city. But we will leave that topic for now as it is lengthy and we'll simply say that we know that the city must be built by mortal hands. And now I'll pivot directly to what the prophets are seeing and saying when they saw 
the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. The phrase, the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, crops up in a few places. Ether 13, Revelation 21, being just a few. But the point that most people are missing, and once I point it out, most people will smack their head and will think, oh, wow, how did I forget about that, is there is more than one New Jerusalem. The quotes above by Joseph Fielding Smith and Joseph Smith brought your attention to that very fact when they said that the city of Enoch shares the same name as the Zion in Jackson County, and the Old Jerusalem will also be rebuilt. So all three share similar names. So can a prophet be standing in Jackson County, a city of holiness, a new Jerusalem, and look up and see another new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, the answer is yes. Do we have such a prophecy? Is it laid out distinctly and coherently? Yes, it is. Turning to Moses chapter 7, let's read. And righteousness will I send down out of heaven, and truth will I send forth out of the earth, to bear testimony of my only begotten, his resurrection from the dead, yea, and also the resurrection of all men. Now, doing a point of reference, many members will say, well, the righteousness out of heaven must be the, the restoration of keys, powers, and priesthood to the earth. And the coming forth of the Book of Mormon is the truth sent out from the earth. Well, I have a different interpretation that I believe is correct. And, and it will become more apparent as we go through the rest of these verses. I believe that this is Joseph Smith coming down from heaven after his resurrection and the truth that is being called forth from out of the earth is the ten tribes. Notice right out, right up the bat, right up front, that this interpretation makes more sense. We know that from the history of the church that the Book of Mormon actually came before any of the keys or priesthood, etc. So right off the bat, you have a chronology problem with your first interpretation. Secondly, once again, the Lord is making reference to this event testifying of the resurrection of all men. Why would that be included here? Well, watch or read my videos, papers, J Joseph Smith to return for my complete breakdown of this. But summary, simply put, the Lord says in Doctrine and Covenants that the resurrection, or more specifically, the resurrection of a single man is the sign that we should look for. But let's continue with the verse. Quote, and righteousness and truth will I cause to sweep the earth as with a flood to gather out mine elect from the four quarters of the earth. Members then will put this point of reference as missionary force sweeping the earth. I, however, put this as the 144,000 going forth and sweeping the earth. Let's continue reading. Unto a place which I shall prepare, an holy city, that my people may gird up their loins and be looking forth for the time of my coming. For there shall be my tabernacle, and it shall be called Zion, a new Jerusalem. This is where the other interpretation completely turns to ash. Missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, as much as they would like to think they are, are not gathering people to Zion. They are gathering people into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And just in case people might be tempted to say that this is a figurative statement, the Lord says, no, 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 my tabernacle, meaning my body, will be in the midst of that city. So, you tell me. You think missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints are baptizing people and bringing them to a city that Jesus Christ himself is living in. Missionaries aren't even bringing people to the temple. 
missionaries don't even have the keys to get members or non-members into the temple, only to the waters of baptism. The 144,000, on the other hand, have the keys given them to seal up to life eternal or unto damnation. Their mission is to bring people into the church of the firstborn. The church of the firstborn are members who have had their calling and elections made sure, i.e. they have seen and can see Jesus Christ, i.e. they are the pure in heart. So in this verse, we learn that Joseph Smith returns. He calls the ten tribes home. The new Jerusalem is redeemed and built. The 144,000 are chosen, purified, and sent out into the world as a flood one last time to hunt out the elect, which is also referenced in Jeremiah 16, 16. And they are getting those elect and funneling them to the new Jerusalem. Well, then verse 63 happens, quote, And the Lord said unto Enoch, Then thou, thou shalt thou and all thy city meet them there, and we will receive them into our bosoms, and they shall see us, and we will fall upon their necks, and they shall fall upon our necks, and we will kiss each other. And there shall be mine abode, and it shall be Zion, which shall come forth out of all the creations which I have made. And for the space of a thousand years, the earth shall rest, end quote. Well, that is interesting. Because around the time the 144,000 are sent off, Jesus will be living in the new Jerusalem. Around that time, the seventh seal will be opened. Well, what else happens around the time the seventh seal is opened? The sign of the Son of Man, which is the city of Enoch returning. We then hear about a space of half an hour of silence in heaven before the great and dreadful day. Why is there silence in heaven? Because the Lord's tabernacle is no longer in heaven. It is on earth. His voice will no longer be uttered from heaven, but will be a roaring forth from New Jerusalem. Well, do we have any other scriptural references to pinpoint the return of the city of Enoch as not being at the beginning of the building of New Jerusalem or the Mount of Olives, but actually at the great and dreadful day? And the answer to that is yes. In the Joseph Smith translation of Genesis 14, we read, quote, And men having this faith, coming up under this order of God, were translated and taken up in heaven. And now Melchizedek was a priest of this order. Therefore, he obtained peace in Salaam, which Jerusalem is a piece of that, and was called the Prince of Peace. And his people wrought righteousness and obtained heaven. They sought for the city of Enoch, which God had before taken, separating it from the earth, having reserved it unto the latter days, or the end of the world. So we learn, end quote, so we learned that those translated, those righteous men, uh, priests, etc., etc., those that will be the kings of kings, those people who will be the, the noble and, and wise, all those people that were translated went to that same city. We then learn that this city is to return at the end of the world. Okay, so when is that? Reading in Joseph Smith Matthew, we read, And Jesus left them and went upon the Mount of Olives, and he sat upon the Mount of Olives. And the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be which thou hast said concerning the destruction of the temple and the Jews? And what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Or the destruction of the wicked, which is the end of the world? End quote. Well, that is clearly referencing the great and dreadful day, where everything of a celestial order will be destroyed and the world will be partially rolled back into the presence of God. This does not reference the Lord's second coming in New Jerusalem or the Lord's second coming events at the Mount of Olives. Around the time of the seventh seal being opened and the Lord's anointing in Adam on Diamond, the city of Enoch will begin to make its return, as we've just learned. During this time period, the Savior's tabernacle will be in Jackson County. 
the sign of the Son of Man, the city of Enoch returning, will get brighter and brighter over the course of 21 years until it consumes our sky and arrives at the great and dreadful day about the space of half an hour in heaven after the anointing in New Jerusalem. During those 21 years, the tabernacle of the Lord will be living in New Jerusalem, a city of holiness in Jackson County. If one were to look up, they could say that they also saw New Jerusalem, a city of holiness, even Zion, coming down from heaven. Well, where will the city of Enoch return? From where it was taken, the American continent. Let's turn to Revelation 21 and let's just make sure this interpretation still jives. Verse 2, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. End quote. So, here we have John seeing the holy city, New Jerusalem, the city of holiness, coming down out of heaven. This is the city of Enoch coming down. And then he continues in verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God, end quote. So what does this mean? This is heaven declaring that Jesus is no longer up there. Jesus is in Jackson County, Missouri. Continuing to read in verse 4, And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the waters of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. End quote. These verses are referencing the peace the saints will have with the Savior as their King of Kings in Jackson County, Missouri. But wait, I hear one says. This is referring to after the great and dreadful day, not the time period between New Jerusalem and the great and dreadful day. Well, let's keep reading in verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and adulterers and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, end quote. Shall have is a reference to the future, not the present. In Daniel chapter 7, we learn about the anointing in verse 14, where the Lord was given, where the Lord was, quote, given him dominion and glory and a kingdom. This is referring to the new Jerusalem uh, in Jackson County, continuing to read, quote, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him, end quote. From the New Jerusalem to the great and dreadful day, there will be many people, nations, tongues, etc., that do not serve the Lord. There will be many abominable, unbelieving, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, liars. They will still exist but they will be progressively d destroyed over time during those 21 years as the vials are poured out, culminating in the great and dreadful day where all the wicked will be burned to stubble. Sp speaking of the vials, let's get back to verse 9, in which John is taken by the angel who had one of the vials and was carried away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and then was shown the, the actual city coming down. Now, this terminology is used repeatedly by prophets to describe being taken off the earth into the mountain of the Lord, which we would just call maybe space. Many prophets, after being taken up, the very first thing they see is the whole world. If you have been to the temple, I want you to think the temple video. In this case, John is taken to the city of Enoch, which is returning. 
And the fact that he is taken in reality to space to see the city of Enoch returning, and he's not taken to that of the New Jerusalem in Jackson County, should be painfully obvious by the time you get to verses 22 to 24. In verse 22 we read, And I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. This alone obliterates the interpretation that this city of holiness is the same in Jackson County. Because we know that there will be at least one temple in Jackson County, Missouri. But in case you still want a little more proof, let's keep reading in verse 23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of the Lord did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. End quote. Well, while the city of Enoch is returning, it will be flying through space, and thus won't have a sun or a moon. John here, to calm your mind, lets you know that while they are thus traveling, they won't need a sun or a moon, they won't die in transit. Why wouldn't the saints in Jackson County have a sun or a moon? He says that the Lord's glory will sustain them, and we know that the glory of the Lord is light, which is intelligence. Going back to verse 24, And the nations of them which are saved, which are saved, shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor unto it. Well, we learn from verse 27 of the same chapter that no unclean thing is in this city. This is not referring to the worldly kings of the earth. It's referring to the kings of kings that the Lord will be king over. Or to the kings that the king, the, the Lord will be king over. It is referring to what was discussed in Joseph Smith's translation Genesis. Those that sought for the city of Enoch and obtained it. Let's break down one more that has all three locations in it, the city of Enoch, Jackson County, and Israel, all of, all of which are or will be a city of holiness, even Zion. Will we do that in Ether chapter 13? Start with verse 2, quote, For behold, they rejected all the words of Ether, for he truly told them of all things from the beginning of man, and that after the waters had receded, from off the face of this land, it became a choice land above all other lands, a chosen land of the Lord, wherefore the Lord would have that all men should serve him who dwell upon the face thereof. And that it, and that it. Well, it is important to identify the it here. What is the it? It is America, the choice land. But more specifically, it's ancient America, long, long ago. Continuing to read, was the place of the New Jerusalem, was the place of the New Jerusalem, past tense. Okay, what New Jerusalem existed on ancient America? That's the city of Enoch. Okay, let's keep reading. Which should come down out of heaven and the holy sanctuary of the Lord, end quote. So this is confirming that the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven is the city of Enoch from ancient America. To save you time, now you can read it on your own. Verse 4 deals with Jackson County. Verse 5 deals with the Old Jerusalem. Verses 6 through 8 deal with Jackson County, New Jerusalem. And then verse 9 talks about the great and dreadful day. So to recap, Old Jerusalem gets rebuilt, New Jerusalem and Jackson County gets built. And then verse 9 says that the great and dreadful day happens. Okay. Okay. And then we read in verse 10, and then. Okay, verse 10 should now be interesting. And then is a point of reference. These are important because the way the Book of Mormon and ancient scripture was written 
was without punctuation. This was the only way for them to combine thoughts and give chronology. Quote, and then, end quote, means, when they say that, after the events of what was previously described. And what was previously described in verse 9 was the great and dreadful day. A new heavens and new earth, end quote. That was from verse 9. Well, let's continue with the verse. And then cometh the new Jerusalem. We know that the city of Enoch will return at the great and dreadful day. Verses 10 through 11 describe the process after the world is partially rolled back into the presence of the Lord and made terrestrial. The process of people and cities who were caught up returning back to the earth and the order of their return. And the order of their return is the first shall be last and the last shall be first. President Joseph Fielding Smith summarized Ether 13, 2 through 11 thus, quote, In the day of regeneration, when all things are made new, there will be three great cities that will be holy. Three. One will be the Jerusalem of old, which shall be rebuilt according to the prophecy of Ezekiel. One will be the city of Zion, or of Enoch, which was taken from the earth when Enoch was translated and which will be restored, and the city of Zion, or New Jerusalem, which is to be built by the seed of Joseph on this, the American continent. During this cleansing period, the city, Zion, or New Jerusalem, will be taken from the earth, and when the earth is prepared for its celestial glory, when it's rolled, partially rolled back, the city will come down according to the prediction in the book of Revelation. Bruce R. McConkie summarized this thus, quote, Enoch saw the latter-day restor restoration of the gospel and the subsequent building of the New Jerusalem. Righteousness and truth will I cause to sweep the earth as of the flood to gather out mine elect from the four quarters of the earth unto the place which I shall prepare, prepare the Lord told him, and holy city, that my people may gird up their loins and be looking forth to the time of my coming. For there shall be my tabernacle, and it shall be called Zion, a new Jerusalem. And the Lord said unto Enoch, Then shalt thou and all thy city meet them there, and we will receive them unto our bosoms, and they shall see us, and we will fall upon their necks, and they shall fall upon our necks, and we will kiss each other. Thus it is that the new Jerusalem shall be built by the saints and shall also come down from heaven. Having in mind these glorious truths relative to the millennial new Jerusalem and the celestial city of the same name, knowing that Enoch Zion had been taken to heaven and would return again, the ancient prophets looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God, confessing the while they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth, and God hath prepared for them a, a city. That is, he hath prepared it for those who gain salvation. For such come unto the Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. End quote. May we, may we, brothers and sisters, keep our mind, our eye, single to the glory of God and ready ourselves for celestial law and look forward to the building of such an holy city that has in it heaven, i.e. the tabernacle of the Lord. And yet we can look up and see heaven coming down to meet us. May we be so blessed to be among the pure in heart. May we be so blessed to take part in such miracles. May we be blessed to see such things is my prayer in Jesus' name, amen.